This is uh, part two of a three-part lesson by Jason Engel, your math teacher for Math 96. What is average? Lesson 2.9. So continuing from where we left off, you can see that we can look, we see some examples of summarizing data about credit cards. We've talked about already about the definition of mean, median, and mode. Let's see how it plays out with these numbers. Surveys indicate that the percentage of college freshmen with a credit card was 21% in 2012, while 60% of college seniors had a credit card. One third of the college students reported having a zero balance on their credit card. The average balance carried across all student cards was um, $500. However, the median balance was 136. So that's a lot of information, but what does that really tell us? Well, let's look at some numbers and see if we can make some sense out of this. Imagine you ask four groups of six college students what their credit card debt is. The amount of dollars of debt for each student in each group is shown in the table, values listed in order of size. So, for example, group A, again, the credit card debt for each of the six students is listed in order of size from one student has no debt to another student who has six $1,620 in debt. In group B, um, there's six, six different students now, and they all have the same exact amount of debt, $500. Group C, it appears that some data was lost. There's a missing number. We know five of the six um, students' credit cards debts, but somehow we know the mean of the five numbers. I wonder how if we, if we might be able to recover that missing information. And group D, we can see that five of the six students had zero credit card debt, and one of them had a, a very large credit card debt of $3,000. So I'm going to pause the video and see if you can fill in the mean, median, and mode, as well as the missing number in group C. And um, we'll see if we can come up with these numbers. Pause the video and give it a shot. It'll make this more meaningful. Did you pause? What did you find? If you add up the six numbers in group A, it adds up to 3,000. And 3,000 divided by six is 500. With group B, um, you really don't even need to bother even adding up the 500 six times. The middle number of um, 500, 500, 500, any number of times is going to be 500. And with group D, you add up the six numbers. Um, you don't need a calculator to know that those add up to 3,000. You divide by six and you get 500 again. So in fact, all four groups have the same mean. But there's clearly different things going on in each set. Let's take a look at the median. The you know, Going back to group A, there's two middle numbers, 110 and 170, and the average of those is 140. So the median for group A is 140. In group B, the median is the average of the two middle numbers again, which is 500 and 500, so no surprise, 500. Group C, the two middle numbers are 480 and 490, so the median is 485. And group D, the two middle numbers are 0 and 0, so the median is 0. As for the mode, group A um, has no mode. Group B has a certain has a mode since 500 appears so often. Group C has no mode, and group D does have a mode since a zero shows up so frequently. Now, how did I know that um, the missing number in group C was 460? Well, you gotta reason it out a bit, um, since. In each of the groups A, B, and D, we saw that before we divided by 6, that the subtotal must have been 3,000. And so likewise for group C, in order to have a mean of 500, it means that the subtotal of the six numbers must have been 3,000. And so if you add up the 410, the 480, the 490, the 550, and the 610, the five numbers that we do know, I believe it adds up to... 2,540. 
Uh, yeah. So um, the missing number would be the, that number, which would make it add up to 3,000, and that would be 460. You can subtract um, 2540 from 3,000 to get 460. Now let's consider, let's make some more observations about the median. At least half of the data values are less than the median. If you look at the, each of the four groups separately, is that a true statement? Sometimes, uh, not at all, or all the time? Pause the video. What do you think? Did you pause? What did you find? It looks in, the, in group A, the median is 140. And it looks like three of the members of group A are less than 140. And so it seems that at least half of the data values are less than the median, at least in the case of group A. But in group B, the median again is, in this case, is 500. But are there any numbers that are less than the median in group B? The answer is no. So already we can see that sometimes at least half the data values are less than the median, and sometimes at least half the data values are not less than the median. Let's move on to the second. Uh, remark. At least half of the data values are either less than or equal to the median. Is that never true, sometimes true, or always true? What do you think? Pause the video. See if you can um, decide. Did you pause? What did you find? Again, if you look at group A, half of the data values are indeed less than the um, median of 140. In group B, again, the median is 500, and in fact, all of the numbers are less than or equal to the median. So certainly at least half are less than or equal to the median. So that would be a true statement for group B as well. In group C, 485 is the median, and indeed exactly three of the numbers are less than or equal to the median. And with group D, um, at least half of the data values, in fact, four of the six data values are um, either less than or equal to the median of zero. So that's always true. And if you uh, think about it, at the statement at least half of the data values are greater than the median, for similar reasons, make sure you can see why this is, that will be true sometimes, but not all of the time. And at least half of the data values are either greater than or equal to the median. That will always be true. At least half of the data values equal the median. That could be true under special circumstances, but not always. So recall that a college student's credit card um, carry a mean balance of $500 while having a median balance of 136 What does this indicate about the distribution of credit card debt among various students? Does one of the groups in the table have a distribution similar to this? What do you think? Group A, Group B, Group C, or Group D? Which of those would best represent um, the statistics that we have on hand? Pause the video and see if you can um, see, what, see what I'm about to say. Did you pause? What did you find? It appears that uh, group A um, mo best correlates to um, what we have, the statistics that we have on hand. The mean is 500, and for group A, the median is 140, which is relatively close to the 136. Um, so we can see that because there are some people who had a very small credit card debt, in order for the mean to be 500, there had to be um, one or more uh, students with a very large credit card debt. In this last exercise, I will not give an answer, but see if you can um, uh, see if you can figure it out. It says a survey of in 2012 indicated the college freshmen carry a mean credit card debt of $611. 
but $47 is the median of their credit card debt. Create a data set of five freshman students so that the data set has a mean and median that is the same as that of the surveyed college freshman. Can you come up with some numbers? You can uh, perhaps venture your guesses in the comments below.